Instead of using people's secrets to control them, why not control them directly? Mind control might just be the ultimate spy technique. Will it ever be possible to read the thoughts and feelings of another human being? Maybe even put ideas into their head to have them do our bidding? Science is finding a way. In a strictly therapeutic context, Dr. Mark George uses magnetic stimulation to treat depression. So if you look at the thumbnail... It's a powerful demonstration that our minds can come under outside influence. It looks very promising now that we can use this by stimulating over the prefrontal cortex to influence mood both in pathologic states like depression or um, even in healthy controls we can subtly cause people to be happier or sadder. The technology was first used to explore how the brain controlled movement but more and more doctors are using magnetic brain stimulation to help lift the spirits of depressive patients but could it be used to plant specific ideas into a person's head what we're doing is we are uh, either heightening or diminishing regional activity in our, in our brains and our brains obviously have mechanisms to regulate moods just as we regulate our heart rate or other things and that what we're beginning to do is to be able to use this to understand those regulatory systems and kind of push them one way or another. But what about the possibility of reading people's thoughts? Using brain imaging tools, doctors can observe the brain activity associated with specific thoughts or behaviors. It would be possible to not only read the emotional states, but perhaps to induce the emotional states by turning on or off certain regions and then also taking a picture. So. Uh, although we don't have the ability right now to take a map of the brain and say what, whether someone's happy or sad or angry, um, that's not far away, I don't think. At the height of the Cold War, both sides sought to perfect mind control or brainwashing techniques. Could magnetic brain therapies and brain mapping be used to control people by tampering with their emotions or memory? Well, it's a powerful new tool that, just like uh, nuclear uh, reactions, can be either used to harness energy um, or misused uh, for atomic bombs. Uh, and with the ability to go in and push and pull brain regions, you can use that in therapy, which is what we're doing here, or potentially use it for... Uh, mis-encoding of information or other things like that. Um, so just like any tool that our society has, it's really up to us as a society to make sure that it's used properly. The ultimate spy, however, is unlikely to be bound by the same code of ethics as scientists. They'll use whatever tools they can. In San Francisco, California, those tools might already be in development. Cheryl Welsh maintains that the U.S. government is testing mind control on unknowing victims. Well, basically, um, this is an, I've, I'm networking on the Internet, and this is a worldwide international problem. Uh, the International Red Cross has a 1990 article which discusses the uh, fact that many major superpowers, many industrialized countries, are researching electromagnetic technology for anti-personnel um, uses, and um, the technology is highly classified. Cheryl believes that she and others are the victims of this mind control research. Many of the victims that I network with describe hearing voices and um, microwave illness where, where they have uh, headaches, uh, just generally sleep disturbances, uh, sunburns even though it's at night, just microwave effects. Microwaves and other radio frequencies are known to affect the human body. But could they be responsible for voices in people's heads? In Chicago, Illinois, a world authority on microwave hearing shows how it could work. I'm hearing a microwave pulse like a click. Now it sounds like a, a chirp with a tonal quality to it. Professor James Lynn is hearing sounds that aren't there. But he's not crazy. 
Pulses of microwave energy are being generated and fired at him from behind. Microwaves can be heard depending on the individual, uh, depending on the hearing acu acuity of the individual. Individuals with a fairly normal hearing can hear microwaves at the quite a low level. The energy of the absorbed microwaves causes brain tissue to very slightly heat up and expand, causing a pressure wave to be picked up by the hearing mechanism in the inner ear. Professor Lin is far from hearing voices, but it could be possible to send coded signals to an agent this way. Brain is an electrical organ. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to electrical signals. Since microwave is electrical, therefore, in principle, one could uh, embed or encode information in the microwave signal such that it could be perceived by the brain. It may be some time before we can control someone's thoughts, but we could influence them, perhaps even send secret instructions at a distance. Instead of breaking into a secure installation, the ultimate spy could control someone on the inside and have their dirty work done for them. But why stop with individuals? If the ultimate goal of the ultimate spy is ultimate power, could whole populations be controlled? The answer is frightening. Before and during World War II, leaders manipulated the public opinion with a potent new info weapon. Propaganda. By controlling what people believed, ministries of information on both sides convinced millions to fight for their country and to die for it. Even today, governments take pains to present information precisely to control the mood and morale of civilian populations. But they've also been seeking more direct means. Steve Bratchett used to be part of the U.S. intelligence community. The history of uh, mind control hasn't been kept too well as secret. Uh, MK Ultra, which was exposed, uh, it was front page news in the New York uh, Times. Uh, for example, uh, the CIA uh, was exposed with mind control uh, experimentation in uh, the Allen Institute in Canada. The CIA's MK Ultra mind control program focused on electronic means of controlling people as well as the use of experimental drugs. Steve Bratcher believes these tools are in use today. They would want to do that to manipulate people, to manipulate, for example, politics, behavior, uh, getting their way, so to speak, uh, uh, getting people to think a certain way, act, believe, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a large populace, just a strategic location of populace to manipulate the others, to create the 